Good evening and a very warm welcome to this hour's English news package with radio and television Tonga News for tonight. Making headlines, police launch an investigation into the death of a 69-year-old man under police custody. Acting Prime Minister opens new water supply for Lo Mai Viti and Ministry of Health urges the people to continue wearing face masks. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin, including the latest news from sports and the weather update for the hour. Now I'm Vaifano Dobola with the stories in detail. Tonga police have announced that their investigators from the Professional Standard Unit are investigating the death of a 69-year-old man in police custody at the Mua police station on Monday. The deceased, who was overly intoxicated, was arrested and detained by police on Sunday the 3rd of July following a call for assistance from his wife. In a press release from Tonga police, authorities found the man dead in a police cell on Monday morning and circumstances indicate suicide. Tonga police are required to follow procedures outlined in their custody management policy and accordingly, the commissioner has instigated an investigation into the matters surrounding the incident. Police Commissioner Shane McLennan has asserted that the Tonga police is allowing the professional standard unit investigation to take its course and any negligence of duty is not acceptable and will not be tolerated as it undermines the commitment of the majority of their police staff and importantly, the trust and confidence of the public that they serve. However, an inquest will be held upon completion of the police investigation. People of Lomaiviti are delighted to receive a more efficient water supply after the acting Prime Minister, Honorable Boasi Matailete, opened the new water supply this afternoon. The acting Prime Minister, Honorable Boste, marked the completion of the water maintenance, distribution of water tanks, as well as the installation of a solar powered water pump for the community of Romaiviti this afternoon. During the launch ceremony, he said that this is part of the government's efforts to prepare the people for natural disasters, not only in Romaiviti, but other villages too. Meanwhile, the CEO of Medak, Paula Mau, said that water supply is one of the most important issues that they deal with as it is important for people to have safe and drinkable water especially from climate change he mentioned that this water is pumped using solar power which is a sufficient method in preparation for the future the town officer of Lomaviti, Hare Kalokalo, thanked the government for their efforts as they will now reap the benefits of better water supply. This project was made possible through the Ministry of MEDAC, the National Emergency Management Office, NEMO, and related stakeholders. The project is estimated to be over 600,000 paanga. Parents have raised their concerns and fear over the children's vulnerability to the new outbreak of flu and rhinovirus as cases continue to rise. A parent from the Western District of Tongatapu told Radio and Television Tonga News this morning they are especially concerned about the children contracting the disease at school. Devita Hausia Vauleleva says he hopes that parents will be more cautious from any possible form that will enable rhinovirus and flu to spread more rapidly. He urges parents to ensure that their children wear masks at all times, especially when they go to school, as he has noticed that many children are attending school without masks. Meanwhile, in an interview with the acting CEO of the Health Ministry, Dr. Anna Akauola, she also advised the public to wear face masks and take the same prevention measurements for COVID-19 as it also applies to the new flu and rhinovirus. However, many members of the public have been misinformed that there have been deaths as a result of flu and rhinovirus outbreak. Health officials are urging members of the public to be more cautious when purchasing food items as they continue to remove expired food items from the shops and local stores. Mark Ake has more on that story. The Food Division's Deputy CEO of the Ministry of Agriculture, Isidali Aholele, says warning letters and a copy of the food regulation have been issued and provided to Asian and Tongan stores in Tonga. The Food Division is working cooperatively with related stakeholders such as Consumer Affairs Division and the Ministry of Health to ensure no expired foods are still on sale. 
A holiday says if any stores are still trying to sell expired food, those shopkeepers will be charged according to regulation. He says not only are they charging those who sell expired food, but also shopkeepers that attempt to change or hide the expiry dates of their products. The concern is because consuming expired food items can be hazardous to humans. As the health ministry is trying to minimize the spread of COVID-19 as well as the flu and rhinovirus outbreak, there is also a focus on non-communicable diseases or NCTs. Mark Aki again tells you more. The deputy CEO of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Anaka Wola, says that NCDs is still the number one cause of death. She says that combating NCDs lies within personal decisions that people make and they're responsible for their own health and well-being. She also believes there needs to be an emphasis on healthy food decisions. Healthy food decisions include eating more fruits and vegetables and cutting down on fatty and sweet food or drinks. Akawala recommends taro leaves and pele, which are staple ingredients in traditional Tongan food. The Ministry of Health is hoping that schools will advocate and promote the importance of healthy eating so that every boy and girl can grow up and become accustomed to healthy lifestyles. And class portal now Ben from Mount Smart Stadium following a brawl between supporters of the recent Mate Maatonga test match with New Zealand Kiwis. The days of enjoying beer from the bottle in Mount Smart corporate boxes have come to an end. This follows chaos erupted during a speech by victorious Kiwis captain Jesse Pramwich after his side triumphed over a spirited Mate Maatonga opposition late last month. Auckland Stadium director James Parkinson said at the same time it was the venue's policy that all drinks were decanted into plastic cups for corporate box. Parkinson added that they have always allowed classes and class bottles in their indoor corporate areas, but now a change made to the policy with VIP have now moved to a policy of 100% decanted into plastic, with only catering staff can handle class bottles and will apply to all events. There have been no arrests in relation to the disorder as investigation continues following lines of inquiry. Meanwhile, in Auckland, physiotherapist Samantha Henry had just finished watching the game when the stoush erupted. Henry was whacked with a bottle out of the blue when she turned around to investigate the commotion. It left her with a black eye, but the outcome could have been much worse, as she said. However, at least three people in the ground were injured. That was the latest from the local scene with Tonga Development Bank. Sport is up next, brought to you with the kind sponsorship of the Pacific Team Bar and Hardware, to be presented by Mark Ake. To football, the first friendly game in the lead-up to the OFC Women's Nations Cup kicked off at 6 p.m. at Churchill Park, Lautoka, Fiji yesterday between Fiji and the Mataliki. The Fijians coming out as the victors 5-0. Vanisha Kumar opened Fiji's account in the 22nd minute to lead 1-0 against Tonga. Fiji captain Sophie Dialoai took her team up after a goal in the 36th minute before halftime. Fiji led 3-0 against Tonga thanks to a goal in the 60th minute by Coletta Liku Dula Dula followed by another score by Thema Nausau in the 70th minute. 20-year-old Philomena Randea's 85th minute capped off an impressive win. The Mataliki showed occasional sparks of good plays, but Fiji outclassed the girls in raid. Mataliki left the kingdom last week and the team is coached by former Australian international Carnish Selby and is captained by Vea Funaki. Tonga's first match in the OFC Women's Nations Cup will be against Samoa on the 13th of this month. That wraps up this evening's English news package with radio and television Tonga News for the hour. But before we part, here's one final look at today's top stories. Police launch an investigation into the death of a 69-year-old man under police custody. Acting Prime Minister opens new water supply for Lo Mai Viti. And Ministry of Health continues to urge people to wear face masks. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Bahifunato Pola. Have a pleasant evening.